course, love having our now starter kit as we go into the cat fight. That is your final match of the evening. It's going to be Kansas State in blue. It's close enough to purple. And Rogers <laughs> State blue. Well, they're going to be in orange. It's going to be the Hillcats and the Wildcats. And it's already the Hillcats are trying to put them under fire. Yeah, it's Cosmo with the ones who take a shot. But the Wildcats able to push back down. Transition, what a save. That was a huge and quick play. But Rogers State was up for the challenge. Now trying to take advantage of a little bit of the upfield pressure, but they had some overt positioning as Marlin was there. And some extra touches around the box is at least keeping the Kansas State defense from advancing from out of their backline position. You kind of have this soft law, a bit of a double commit. Worm will be on the catch, but now this is a dangerous spot. It's going to be Bouncer, and it has to be found by Kez. Kansas State has not been able to escape. They're finding just the tiniest bit of inches, but space is not clear. Yeah, they just like they're not expecting. Rogers State to be where they are. Their position is throwing them for loops, and they really haven't been able to organize. I know it's super early, but you know you have to figure things out, get back into the rotation, and RSU has gotten plenty of chances. But that doesn't mean that K-State isn't ready for the challenge back there. They play with such speed. That's why we saw that first challenge develop in the first place, and they come back at you again, but a big save again from Cosmo this time. Rogers State tries to stay on it. Eventually, they do get a clear outside and pass that midfield presence. And Rogers State here with an offensive chance. Wildcats looking for an extended offensive, but that didn't come as a great challenge. Was able to give Rogers State at least some breathing room. And it's going to be up to Marlin, who has been pretty sure handed here so far. But they don't come up with the ball. And in fact, it's going to be the drop down. Oh, what a save. It was a ricochet. And Cosmo happened to be in the great top 90 position to make it work out. And just so everyone is aware, winner of this one will be going on to face against Swozu. So all eyes are on that grand final position, but all eyes right now by the Hillcats are on the back of the net trying to take this against Kansas State. Yeah, trying to turn it up field. And uh, obviously you want to focus on the challenge at hand, but that Swozu team which put up numbers and it was put us quite the show in the first round as me and FBI Tugbo were able to watch it. So it, they got to be up for that challenge. And right now both defenses are doing just that with the opponent they have right now across the pitch. That one's going to launch back. A bit of an awkward exchange there and a bounce that'll favor Kansas State and give them the 1-0 lead. It was such a weird 50, and Cosmo was kind of the next man. It has an orange mm. streak, and what a bang. That's uh, that's not the one that Cosmo wanted. It was a great shot. It just happened to be off of an accidental 50 towards their own <laughs> net. I think they got their back bumper uh, kind of pushed by a, by a Wildcat as they were advancing upfield. So if you're Roger State, you got, you've had a lot of good pressure. Just got to be able to shake that one off, move on. But Kansas State, they'll take those. They will. It's not like they haven't had extended pressure, you know? So it feels good to bounce one in regardless of how it goes in. You just, it'll justify all the work that you put in early and really get you going in the confidence department, which is never a bad thing to have here in these late matches in the NECC playoffs here. Which we appreciate you joining for the extended of this day. Again, this will be the last match here of the Knights. We're expecting nothing less than the show that we've already seen in the first three minutes. I mean, it has been high impact, quick paced. And if you think that it's been a defensive game, there have been defensive plays, yes, and big ones at that. But the attacks are just as ready as now a response from Roger State was locked and loaded, but K-State will shut them down. Marlin had to take a step away because there was two defenders stepping up into their front zone. And so there was not going to be a clean connection off of the handoff that was starting to illum be illuminated from the near side of this box. That's an awkward one. And then nearly given away completely back to Marlin as they came streaking in, now creating disruption to keep this one in this front side corner in favor of the Hillcats. And though they do find a multitude of connections, they're not able to get anything threatening against the box. So at the 110 mark, we've had all of one goal. And like you said, it's not exactly been defensive masterclass. It's been just more about how they can stretch these offenses thin. And they're looking for an extra man, but Bringy shut down that time. Yeah, good reaction to get back up in, but two of Roger State Blue defenders were the ones committing to it. Luckily, it didn't harm them too much as they weren't the third man back, or at least one of them wasn't, right? It was the first and second, so able to breathe nicely here and, in fact, try to push it. Interesting move, trying to go off the ceiling there, and I think it was the right play to try to get past the last defender. The problem is K-State was ready for it. Roger State again with the touch out, this time off the car of RSU. He'll be challenged here in the corner as well from Kansas State. And now a pass across. Will he turn in time? Just enough to bank it off the side, but not enough 
to bank it back to the center and get a shot off. But Kez is still on it here for Kansas State. Eyeballing that oh. far side again, but a chip out from Rogers State defense as they're able to do just enough to keep it away. They've been composed, but now you have to get a bit feistier. Got to get a lot of energy moving upfield, and Kansas State, the Wildcats oh. are putting the pressure on, and that one will go to the wall. This will be one last possession. They have to get it back over to Cosmo. Oh, oh but the whiff. We had nine saves and seven saves, and then we had nine shots apiece per team, and one that ha through happenstance went in from the midfield. Game number two, now here on lock. I downplayed how much of a defensive showcase it was while the teams really were denying everything that stood in front of them. I want to see what Roger State looks like if they can be able to get something between the pipelines. That's where the threats truly prevail. But the first half minute comes and goes and Kansas State now begins the press. Thought maybe it was going to be a read there, but he left it for Kez. That's a smart decision. He'll go super high. We'll try the waterfall down, but a couple of Roger State defenders will chop at it to try to get it back out this center field. Brenji's going to turn on that one and just loft it in, play a little bit of chip and chase, and Warham tried to jump on it too. Kez, the shot, and it'll break through. Looked like a harmless one, but sometimes those bouncers can be tough to handle. The bouncers are the most difficult thing in Rocket League to defend because you never know at what speed and what level that ball is going to hop right back up to. And though all three defenders were there, it was just a 50-50 play from the backboard and two that were basically motionless at the goal line. So again, the opening score is going to go over to the Cats in purple, but this is much earlier than it was before. R93G. I want to see what they can do because they've really been able to be that glue between both Marlin and Cosmo, and then it's a demolition derby. <laughs> yeah, it has been pretty physical, you know, in the last little bit. Didn't start out that way. No, a bit of a mishap there from Roger State Blue again. So, you know, there's been minimal mistakes as a whole, but every single one of them seems to be against this Roger State Blue team. Man, that's, I mean, that's not exactly the worst play ever because you were actually on that near side post thinking, oh, maybe there's not enough wall space behind me. I just want to make a connection. Okay. Then you try and chase after it, and it goes straight into your own net. So a couple of own goals out of the three that have been accumulated so far for Kansas State. But it's just that kind of pressure that then is allowing Brenji. He's gotten three of the four of them in total. Brenji's been hot, and it just seems like everything seems to be going his way right now, too. Like, I... Okay, RSU should have gotten maybe a better touch there. It's still awkward for him, right? It was difficult yeah. for him to handle. But Brinji was just there, and maybe you shouldn't even be like, that's an aggressive play. Almost looks like he was positioned to try and get a bump demo play, and ended up the ball right on his hood and jumped onto it. But I mean, opportunistic as it is. And now Kez oh. with the double touch. What a read that was, uh, showing off to be a little bit mechy. Man, so Brinji's the joker in this deck of cards that the Wildcats are playing with, and Kez is the ace, because they have been able to find the mechanics to really put the Hillcats on their heels. And just less than two minutes here in game number two, it is a slaughter, but it's a recoverable one. There's a lot of things that can be done in Rocket League and holding a lead must be one of them, especially when you accumulate this much this quickly. Kez to Brinji, trying to showcase the mechs. Oh, and they do so. Hey, give them the ace, I guess, as well. There's four of them to go around. Yeah, and Rez started that one from the get-go. Great pass up to Brinji, nice. and that one wasn't fluky. That wasn't a joker. That was straight up and down, well played. The Kansas State 5-0, a statement piece after a very, very low scoring game. They were the ones putting on the pressure, and now they're, they have the goals to show for it. Chaotic has it been for the Hillcats. Oh, looking for a soft give and go, but... R93 can't find a wheel to touch the ball. Now Cosmo just aiming to slow things down. They get a bump onto Worm. They're going to leave that as a back pass, and that becomes a 2v2 upfield. Make it three as Marlin joins the fray. They're going for a bump situation, but Brinji reads it well. We get the takeaway, and now they can play with the moon shoes. Slow everything just a little bit. That's a back pass. Trying to at least get Worm involved, but Brinji and Kez have been able to just take care of this ball and possession and really deny the Hillcats of the midfield. And the defensive rotation has been flawless for Kansas State. As now this one, though, is going to challenge them, but they cannot end the trout. Hail Monkey Man, it has been 
eight minutes played now, and Roger State Blue still don't have a goal to show for it. That's a long time in Rocket League minutes. Basically, Microsoft minutes, the least threatening a position around the box. R93, he sees both of his teammates retreating. They're looking for boost and looking for it still now as Cosmo will have a full tank. But look at this. This is not advantageous positioning. Usually, you'd want someone at the goal line, not staggered right in front of you at the near side post. And that just showcases the kind of panic and of Rogers State. They've not been able to get a goal, nor can they really get themselves in a threatening dart and dagger that could stab into the back of the net of the Wildcats. Less than 90 seconds remaining, and the boys in purple looking pretty good. The one, two, finally oh. a connection. The in the drought here. And I want you to watch this pass here as Merlo went all the way up the ceiling and using that flip in order to send it all the way across. And what a bullet from RSU to bury it. Make no mistake about it, whenever you get that first goal, it may not mean much here in this game number two, but it might in the series as they finally get something going. I get excited about it. Making sure that your team is still alive. That's a 93 mile an hour shot. Why not? Make it hot. Cosmo will watch after Marlin, and this is still a winnable foray. They get a very high doink, maybe a little bit too much loft than what they would have wanted, and Marlin will be very far back to retrieve, and yet they keep it on the upside of the pitch. One minute to go in the Hillcats. This could just be momentum for later, but how about momentum for now? 50 seconds, and Cosmo will get a tiny piece, and they're going to stick around for the next play, but it's stolen by Worm. And Worm will leave it here for Pringy, whether it's intentional or not. It still kind of works out. Yes, he looks to push forward. Roger State looking a little bit sharper, looking a little bit more settled in. I like when they allow Kansas State to come to them. They've been trying to force the speed and get up to that same mark that Kansas State's been playing with, and you're really playing into their hands at this point. As Roger State just hasn't been able to keep up with them quite yet, but when they've been playing patiently, they look a lot more methodical. And at least they have one on the board, and they'll look to perhaps transition back down here for more. Want one more on the board to say we've gotten a couple heading into game number three, but K-State's going to shut them down again. From midfield, pushing forward. No, Brangie going to cut that one off and sent to the ground. Kansas State will win game two, 5-1. They're going to need a lot more of that if they're going to find success here. But like we mentioned, Hell Monkey Man, this is a best of seven. 2-0, well, you have time to uh, work back into it if you're RSU. That 2-0, though, that's the only two you really want to kind of give up unless you've been able to acquire a couple of your own as this is a full counterplay. Oh. Great find by Bringy. Is they're able to d turn one right the other way? R93 is directly under fire by Worm. That's from the top rope. And look at the denial right now by the Hillcats. Finally, you know they are receiving Kansas State, but they're also going to find them. Oh, but the double tap by Worm and the goal is being bumped. Great set play. Not just existing now, is he? <laughs> no, no. Got on the board again, and that was a great read himself. We saw uh, Brenji hop into this game with a great read defensively, and this would have been RSU up one, but it said that big save comes in handy. You put it in your back pocket, you transition back down the field, and let your team go to work. That was absolutely clinical by K-State, and just sets in more frustration from RSU. As you see, another one of your good offensive chances go lost by the Kansas State defense stepping up, and you're already down early in this game three. You're choosing to receive Kansas State. You're going to play more of a zone, which means that you have to really have good assignment control as players come at you. When you get aggressive like they were before, it's much more man, and you're playing against them. One-on-one, -on -one, Cosmo gets the ball. Actually, the ball gets away from them. They don't even get the boost, so they're going to be set on a retreat pattern. And Marlin absolutely loses it as Kez is just pressing the attack. Luckily for the Hillcats, they press it a bit too hard as that one does sprint on by the old iron. Marlin. Moving up field, and they will be able to capture that midfield boost, which is a very valuable resource considering how oppressed they've been by the Wildcats at this point. 100 seconds go. Marlin and solo play. I don't think they were able to gain the flip, and yet it still drops into the box, but they will have to retreat. Yeah, Marlin set that up with a nice quick flip reset and a reaction. But KSA was up for the challenge again. Cosmo looks down towards <gasps> the slot. Almost got him on the return there as Cosmo was dropping down from the Cosmos. Back down to the ground, but couldn't quite connect on that one. And Kansas State was able to just loft it out. 
After Roger's state finally showing it some life. There's Cosmo again. Flip reset once. Uses oh. it, but couldn't quite get enough loft on it. A mechy play, but couldn't quite fight in twine. Oh, and no. Is the rotation going to get punished? They had a wide open gap. Marlin was just able to jump into the driver's seat there. And this one, again, getting picked up by Cosmo. You got to think that some of the spark of just catalytic want is going to come out of Cosmo. Marlin has gotten a bit faster, and R93 just has to play cleaner. Something about him has been just not connecting, much like they've wanted. That's a giveaway. Oh, a nice musty flick, as that one very quickly contrived. But we're well beyond the midway mark here of game number three. It is just a single blemish on the board. They have to get a goal to tie this up. A little blemish is in Kansas State's gameplay right now. We saw maybe a mistouch in, in possession given directly away by Kez. Roger State needs to be able to jump on those. That was a dunk. Went a little bit high of the mark. Credit RSU for staying patient on that chance. That might have just rolled its way in easily if he had not detected it. Oh, the sidewall. He'll try to work. Worms out two. Last man. Wait. Bringy missed. And wait for the bump. But waited too long as Worm returns and makes the save. That's unfortunate, but they still get a second chance. No one diving. They can't quite crash. Marlin turned right back around, and they had to wait for a second because they didn't have any boost and then thought the bump would come. Flip reset off the crossbar. Do they oh. crash the gate? The third man is there. They will commit to him, and now it becomes a foot race. They're able to get the boost just in the nick of time, but Bringy was at least breathing down their necks. R93 will come back as a third man and allow Marlin to advance into that top corner position, but it's less than 70 seconds to go. Hillcats have no extra time time have to be able to find this score just to even threaten OT. I don't know if it's the frequency in which they're communicating or the efficiency of it, but Roger State, you can tell they're playing oh. way more as a unit. But taking off the field is RSU, and that's your best defender here as Kaz was able to jump out and get it. And now it's all the way back into their zone, though. RSU turns. Cosmo just going to settle it. Try to just chip it across. It might work. Off the crossbar, it wins. And now a double commit from Kansas State will allow Rogers State to try to get to it. But it's played nicely on the 50-50 from Worm to slow it down, let his team rotate. Now at midfield. Somehow that worked. <laughs> a weird pinch there. But they were able to turn it back in. Roger State still on it. The dunk's there. Available. They tried the bouncer, but it's shut down again by Kaz. Chaotic positioning in these zones. And it's been Roger State that's really had the lion's share of chances, but they've not been able to get anything underneath the crossbar. 10 seconds. R93 bringing it to the sidewall. They're going to have enough boost, but Marlin will cut the rotation, and that may cut their chances here in game three to at least give themselves hope for an OT, which is now all that's left on the timer. That one goes to the corner. Marlin sees a chance. R93 is underneath them. Both him and Cosmo are up. Oh. There is no third man. It's going to hit the grass, and we pass. Pick your poison against these Wildcats, man. Producer Sunderlad probably saw me throwing my arms in the air and the vein popping up in the middle of my forehead when I saw two double commits in those zone side rotations. And I was just like, come on, please have one extra guy there. And it came up a bit too short. Shot on target. That one too much wow. speed. Bullet time by Brenji. And that's a Wildcats with another lead. Not where you want to be. I mean, it goes without saying, but having to dig your way out when goals are already coming at a premium is is tough that's really tough pill to swallow here for rogers state the blue team put in all sorts of elbow grades to to get to this point in the first place and to, and to fight against this team that's so strong and has been remember this is a team that didn't surrender but two games during the regular season did kansas state and they haven't dropped one in this series or the playoffs at all Imagine, oh. and this is why Bringy is so dirty. He's filthy with it. It's set up by Worm again, and it's 2 0 Kansas State. That's solid communication, but that's Bringy being nasty. The Super McTwist 920 that they just threw up there <laughs> to be able to make that solid connection straight into mid net. Oh, this might be the beginning of a victory lap for the Wildcats. Marlin, though, doesn't believe in those things as of yet, as you have to go to the timer. Flip reset will be denied, at least not used, as Kez advanced early. Oh, but a shot! Cosmo finally able to put something through. We've seen his mechanics, and he's been very close to doing exactly this. 
And this time, caught Brenji on the back wall. So it, it doesn't take just getting up in the air and getting the flip reset, or in, in this case, just the carry. But it takes recognizing where your defender is. And when they're on that back post, to some degree, you play it low. And that was perfectly placed. Kept his focus. That's what Cosmo, and, and that's what we come to expect from Cosmo throughout the season. It's good to see him land that mark here in this one. And it's good that finally Roger State was able to win something in the midfield because, you know, what's one of the big reasons that Cosmo was also able to score? There was just one defender. They've had to fight against all three being at the goal line and not otherwise have enough boost or extra antics and space to make use of it. This is another 1v2, and look at the stretch both of the defenders. They'll double commit as they sweep across. Worm is already upfield. That's a strike on target! Marlin! Oh, man! He came out of nowhere! Yeah, with that uh, with that sword on the front of his head, the Marlin, if you will, that was a bullet and a half using the boost. Boosting through the ball is a big point here, here because you don't get enough velocity on that shot unless you're just boosting all the way through, launching off the front of your car. Well placed shot as well in Rogers State University. Where have you been? They're showing up now. Another one, Marlin, make it two on the game, and Rogers State University has their first lead of the series. Putting the rocket in Rocket League with these bangers. Holy goodness, finally! Hillcats coming alive over the horizon, top of the hill. And they finally get that lead you were talking about. But again, it's a, it is an uphill drive, no matter how you just slice it and dice it. But it's Marlin's show, and the spotlight's on them. Man, they, they're just playing completely Aggressive. It's like if your backs are against the wall in games counts, I don't know what it is. But this team is just came to life. 4-2 now. That's four in a row goals. Just a minute and a half ago, Hill Monkey Man. We are counting them out. It was 2-0 Kansas State in the game where they could close out. And Roger State Blue said not so fast. We're going to jump in and make a difference. Trying for more here, too. But the last thing they want to do is let off the gas the second that they go back into the gameplay where they're on their heels is the second they get buried. It's going to be a difficult one. They're playing lights out at Roger State Blue. What you got to do when you're this far deep in the gutter, you got to be able to find that gut check and be able to come out on top. And it's been Marlin a lot of the time that's keeping this team inspired. A difficult and awkward arc. Bringy does the calculations early, and that one will sneak by. Which is funny because that's how this series kicked off where it was just, you know, call it luck, call it what you want, like bowl luck. You know, those bounces were favoring him. And so now it felt that same way. And Roger State Blue didn't even give up a, a, a strong goal here from Kansas State. It was a bit of an awkward one, yes, but not one that you want to surrender here, especially when you know K-State is capable of putting points on the board pretty quickly. Marlon's going to try to lead the back pass. He left it for Worm instead, who was able to take a shot, but Cosmo was able to read it, luckily, and bring it back down to earth, where the challenge is had by Bringy. Cuts back down on the 50-50, and Worm leaves it for Kaz to push forward. That one's read nicely as well by Roger State. And they try to send it in, played out, but possession given away to Kaz, and now Roger State Blue will have to deal with him. Flip reset on it. Now, Demo out in front as well, but he couldn't quite find that angle as he came back down. It was the defense of Roger State Blue. He was still trying to chop at it. Eventually, they'll get it out. I do like how Roger State has been able to reassert themselves in the defensive position because, you know, they went all offense all the time. They saw Marlin getting dunk after dunk, and that was great. But then they had one extra reminder that this squad from the Wildcats can, in fact, score. That's Big 12 mentality coming out of their, you know, traditional <laughs> conferences. And that's all about offense. Kansas State, though, they like to grind. And with less than 90 seconds remaining, it's got to be Roger State that has to take that mentality down and really just bleed out every single possession. Marlin will win that 50. Oh, but they don't find this next connection. It becomes an awkward one, but it, this is at least one that isn't found cleanly by Kansas State. You know, Worm was having trouble with it. Didn't need the 100 boost to left it for a teammate. That's actually a very unselfish play. And they're able to launch out to their attacking zone. Chopped out again, though. Brenji will have to try to circulate around. By the time he was able to get a touch, it was Roger State who grabbed it. But possession will just trade back and forth anyways. Uh -oh. So you left it. Now oh. shot taken. Kez will bury it. Far side. You blink and K-State has equalized. 
As soon as I saw R93 not able to elevate and make a connection on this ball, that was a 50-50 position for Cosmo as Kez has put some screamers and top-level dunks into this net. And now, yeah, they got four in a row. And the story was starting to be written a slightly different shade. But it's gone right back to being heavy purple. But it's a mixture now. Marlin has to find all that heat they were generating before and do it again. R93 on the pre-jump. It's going to be Marlin that wants to back him up. This is going to be them finding that position. Kez on the demo as Marlin will body check them. But we got 20 seconds to go. And this is all about survival. They got to stay alive, and now you have a demo on the far side, but it was luckily the third man back from Roger State. I thought Kansas State cleared it. Shot taken. Ten seconds left. It'll roll in. Kansas State on top with a 3-0 lead in the series and a 5-4 lead with just seconds remaining. R93 went into no man's land. It was a clutch save by Marlin. And R93 chase after it, it stuck to the ground. It just didn't have enough of that pace and it fell into waiting hands by the Wildcats. Hillcats got a fight. No one's there. You gotta chip it through. Oh, and there's not gonna be the third man to provide. Kansas State, it's gonna be a 4-0 sweep as they will be advancing to face against Swozu in the grand finals. Oh, there is no good way to fall.